Do you struggle with spending time with God? Is your life so busy that it seems hard for you to squeeze in the time you need to develop a deep and lasting relationship with God? Do you recognize that you desperately need to spend more time with God, but you don't know exactly how to do it? Well, stay tuned because in today's episode, I'm going to share with you a story about an individual who spent lots and lots of time with God, as well as five ways in which you can spend more time with God too. Hello, extraordinary child of God. If you're looking to transition your life from where you are to where God wants you to be, guess what? You're in the right place. If this is your first time visiting my channel, come on and join our community by hitting that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you don't miss another episode. Also, be sure to connect with me on Instagram. Yes, I'm there. My handle is at Simona Watts. Go check out my page and connect with me there. Now, there once lived a man who was deeply in love with God. His love for God was so deep that it was far different from how other men and women loved God. But let me be clear, he wasn't born this way. This deep love that he had for God was something that had grown over the years. You see, the more he spent time with God, the more his love for God grew. It had gotten to the point that each and every day of his life, he'd wake up with a burning desire to commune with God and to learn more and more about him. Now keep in mind, this man was no hermit and he wasn't a monk, but somehow his passion had caused him to spend more and more time with God without interfering with his regular duties. As a matter of fact, it became clear that the more time he spent with God, the better his everyday life became. He was a better husband, a better father, and a better friend. And somehow he was able to perfectly balance all the things that fell upon his plate on a daily basis all while still spending every free moment he could with God. But one day, something strange happened. The man turned up missing. His now adult children looked all over for him. They couldn't find him. Frantically, they went to the places that they knew their father would frequent to spend time with God, but he was not there. They searched and they searched and they searched, but their daddy was nowhere to be found. You see, what they didn't know was that all those years that their father had spent getting to know God and spending quality time with him had an impact on God. So much so that one day God decided he couldn't take it anymore. This long distance relationship was no longer working for him. He wanted more. So he decided it was time to take this relationship to the next level. And as a result, when Enoch was only 365 years old, the Lord took him. And why did the Lord take him? The Lord took him because through all the time that Enoch was spending with him, they developed a relationship that was so dear to the heart of God that God couldn't bear to be without him. And that's why today we are talking about five ways to spend more time with God. Can you imagine how it must have felt to have the God of the universe crushing on you so hard that he says, hold up. I know the plan is for me to wait until the second coming when I crack the sky and scoop up all my children. But there's something about you, Enoch, that just won't let me wait. I don't even want to go through the whole process of you living out the rest of your life, then dying and resting until I come get you. Nope. Let's just skip all that and you come on and receive your reward and live with me now. Isn't that amazing? What a wonderful relationship Enoch and God must have had. And the beautiful thing is that God wants to have that same type of relationship with you because he's no respecter of persons. You and I can have a relationship with him that is just as tight as the one he had with Enoch. The only thing we have to do is make the commitment and the effort to spend time with him, just like Enoch did. Now maybe you're thinking, life is so busy and I have so much on my plate. And if I'm really honest with myself, I don't have the time that I need to spend with God. And if you feel that way, don't worry, because today I'm going to share with you five ways you can spend more time with God, regardless of your busy schedule. And the first tip that I have for you is to command your morning. I'm a firm believer that the best time to spend quality time with God is first thing in the morning. But maybe you're thinking the morning is tough because 
you're not a morning person or you're already rushing and you just can't seem to get it together in the morning, don't be discouraged because I believe you'll be pleasantly surprised if you begin commanding your morning. Now, what do I mean by commanding your morning? Well, it's up to you to be in control of how your morning goes. So several years ago, when I was a new mom with toddlers, my days were so bananas. It seemed like I had no time to spend with God because from the time I woke up, it was one thing after another. I was changing diapers, fixing breakfast, nursing, and a whole host of other things. And it seemed my mornings were no longer my own and I was running spiritually on E. Then I made the decision to command my morning by taking control of it. And I did it by starting my day earlier. I developed a morning routine that made my time with God a priority. So I get up a little earlier, way before the kids did, and go into my closet to pray. I have my little TV tray in there with a chair and my Bible, my highlighters and my pens, and I would have private time with God. And it was so helpful for me. So the first way that you can spend more time with God is by getting up just a little bit earlier than usual and spending time with Him. You can command your morning. The second way you can spend more time with God is through exercise and worship. Here's what I mean. When you go out and exercise, be sure to take your headphones with you. Some of my best times with God have been while I'm walking around my neighborhood early in the morning and I'd be listening to my sermons or my audio Bible. I'd breathe in the fresh air in the morning, stop by a tree and have prayer, then take in nature while I listen to the word through my headphones. This was just another way I could spend more time with God. Now, do you know how much time people spend commuting each day? In the U.S., the average one-way commute time is 26.1 minutes. And if you commute to a full-time job five days a week, round trip, that adds up to 4.35 hours a week, over 200 hours per year, nearly nine days total. Now, that very well could be an opportunity for you to spend some good old quality time with Jesus. If you're a commuter, take advantage of your travel time. Travel is the third way you can spend more time with God. When you're commuting, just don't sit there endlessly listening to the radio or talking on the phone. Instead, determine that travel time is worship time. Again, you can pray while you're driving, you can sing, you can listen to sermons, podcasts, or worship music. Just commit to not wasting the time you have during your commute. Now, the fourth way you can spend more time with God is by adding a set time to pray into your schedule. It doesn't have to be a long time, it could even be just a few minutes. But think about the benefit you will receive by just intentionally deciding to spend more time with him in prayer. Now in a previous video, we talked about the benefits Daniel received from praying to God several times a day. So just imagine how different your life would be if you added in midday and evening prayer time. All you have to do is set an alarm on your smartphone or other device to remind you to pray. Even if it means when you're taking a bathroom break at work that you linger in the bathroom stall for a minute longer so that you can talk to God. God doesn't care where you are. He just is excited to talk to you. That's all he wants. So he'll talk to you wherever you are. When my husband and I were dating, we would go out on dates. We were dating. We would schedule times where we would meet up and go out to dinner or engage in some other activity that allowed us to get to know each other better and spend more time with each other. And we enjoyed those times. But do you know that when we got married, and especially after we had kids, date nights became a thing of the past. It wasn't intentional. It was just that life had gotten so busy we were unconsciously neglecting the quality time we both needed to spend with each other. So one day, we decided to be more intentional and schedule date nights because our relationship is important to us. So I thought about it. If I can do that with my spouse, why can't I do that with my God? So the fifth way you can spend more time with God is by scheduling date nights with him. Don't you think God would appreciate it if you intentionally set aside some time to spend with him? And the thing about dates is they are different than your everyday interactions. I mean, I see Van every day because I live with him. And because of that, I talk to him every day. But it's not every day that I set aside an hour or so of just me and him, where we can just do something out of the ordinary. So when it comes to God, maybe it means you set aside an evening for just you and him, and you dig deep into a certain chapter or topic in the Bible. 
Or maybe you slip away to a quiet, cozy, and peaceful spot, and you just read and commune with no distractions. However you decide to set up your date, make it special for you and for God. You see, the thing about spending more time with God is that the rewards far outweigh the effort that you put in. God is like that sugar daddy that has everything and basically you have nothing. <laughs> and all the sugar daddy wants to do is spend time with you and shower gifts upon you and make your life wonderful. Enoch could have never imagined that his relationship with God would get so deep that one day he would just start walking with God and then eventually be taken away to be with him for eternity. I don't know about you, but I'm longing for the day when God comes and takes me away to spend eternity with him too. Let me know what you think about this week's message by leaving a comment below and share with us the ways you've spent more time with God. As always, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, don't forget that you are extraordinary through Christ. God bless, and I'll see you next week.